Dr. Mark Solms, thank you for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to be here, thank you. First question, maybe for people who don't know, what is neuropsychoanalysis? Well, neuropsychoanalysis is, a, is an interdiscipline. Um, it's an attempt to bring the scientific rigor of neuroscience and the methods into psychoanalysis and the other way around, to try and bring something of the lived life of the mind into neuroscience. We, th where we think that what's lacking in neuroscience is a sufficiently rich, phenomenal aspect of psychology, the experiential aspect of psychology. Uh, uh, and what's lacking in psychoanalysis is scientific rigor. So that's why we thought it was important to combine the two. So try to combine the best of both worlds. Exactly. And how did you uh, get into this field? Because usually at university you either go like in the neuro direction or you go in the clinical direction, then uh, Freud is considered as uh, even a bit esoteric. Yes. Well, um, I originally came via the neuro direction um, and I imagined that there I would be able to grapple with the mysteries of the mind because the most interesting thing about the brain is it's the organ of the mind. There's no other bodily organ or physical thing in the world that has experience. So I was expecting, uh, when I studied neuroscience, and in particular neuropsychology, that was the branch of the neurosciences that interested me for that reason, I was expecting to be able to learn about scientifically how does experience come about, and it's the most incredible thing. But uh, I was very disappointed because when I trained, which was in the early 1980s, our, our conception of the mind in neuroscience was very mechanistic and very simple. We were only looking at the, at the most uh, reducible aspects of mental functioning. And it seemed to me always you know, that what was missing in that was the actual stuff of experience. And so, um, out of frustration, I looked around to see what else was available. And um, it was via my study of the history of neuropsychology that I, that I came to learn, which I never knew before, that Freud was originally a neuroscientist. For 20 years, Freud published hundreds of neuroscientific papers. So I thought, Freud really was a neuroscientist? And so, via those uh, neuroscientific papers of Freud's, I traced how psychoanalysis developed out of neuroscience, and that made me really interested. So, to the horror of my professors, I decided I would train also in psychoanalysis. They said, I mustn't do it, it's very bad for my career. They said, it's like an astronomer studying astrology. You know? But uh, I was uh, bitterly disappointed with neuroscience by itself. And so I did it anyway. And um, then it was, I faced the opposite problem too. Psychoanalysts know nothing about the brain. And they have a very poor conception of science. You know, they come up with theories and then you ask for the evidence for that and all the evidence is just clinical. Um, so then after I finished training in psychoanalysis, which was in the early 1990s, from then until today, uh, all that I've done is to try to integrate those, tri those two fields, to try to bring neuroscientific methods to test psychoanalytic theories and to bring psychoanalytic theories into neuroscience so that we can have a better understanding of, of the mental aspect of brain function. Thank you. And do you think people are interested, uh, especially like young students who want to go into research? Yes. Um, in fact, one of the main reasons that I've come to this conference in Zurich uh, is because it's organized by students. Um, I think that many of us, I mean, I, I was a student once, and uh, many of us, when we come into this field, we are excited by big questions. And then gradually you get that beaten out of you, you know, and you, you, you end up studying uh, much simpler things, and you lose sight of the mysteries and the wonder you know, that brought you into the field in the first place. So I think that if it was possible for students to, to study the mind and the brain in an integrated way from the beginning, they would choose to do that. 
uh, if it was possible. It's not possible. At the moment, you know, you either train in the one side or the other side. And then you get sort of, you get enculturated, you know, into your discipline and you start to take on all the prejudices of your discipline, even though you didn't start with those. So I think it's very important to make it possible for students to study the, 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 the mind and the brain in, 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 and their relationship in their full complexity from the beginning so that um, you don't have to go down a rabbit hole that you never wanted to go down in the first place. Yes, uh, you touched on the topic of uh, we got trained as research scientists foremost at university, at least here. Do you think there's uh, a lot lost that we don't have uh, depth psychology? I do think so. You know, I, I'm, I'm not somebody who uh, is attached to the doctrines of depth psychology. We must remember that when that field first began, it was more than 100 years ago. Many people think if you're interested in, in, in that type of psychology, you're out of date, you know, you're, you're, you're wedded to doctrines of the great minds of those times, you know, like Freud. And that's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's like saying if you study uh, biology today, then you're only going to read Darwin. Or if you study physics today, you're only going to read Newton. You know, these are the pioneers of the discipline, but they're historical figures. The actual subject matter, what we are trying to understand in depth psychology, is the depths of the mind. And we must use all the methods we have and all the advances that have occurred since then. And I don't see any reason why you can't be a researcher and also interested in those questions. And vice versa, I don't see why it's, uh, you know, people who practice psychotherapy and psychiatry, I don't see why the clinical practice has to be removed from experimental science. In, 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 in uh, most uh, medical disciplines, of course, you have practitioners and you have researchers, but as the research advances, so does the practice. Practice is always rooted in science. So I, I see absolutely no reason why the same should not apply to the science and the, and the therapeutics of the mind. Uh, thank you. One of the topics you mentioned a bit earlier was uh, mystery. And uh, we're now in Zurich, so I wanted to ask you what uh, are your opinions about Carl Jung? Well, um, he was, so Freud uh, started psychoanalysis uh, in Vienna in the 1890s. Uh, and many people don't know this, but the colleagues who began to accumulate around him and started to, to, to become interested in this discipline that he had begun were all neurologists and um, not psychiatrists. So uh, it was Bleuler here uh, in, in, in uh, Switzerland uh, at the Burkholzi. Uh, he became interested in Freud and his student was Carl Jung. And uh, so Freud was absolutely delighted when uh, these two psychiatrists and such an eminent psychiatrist as Bleuler uh, became interested in his theories. He wanted to expand out of neurology, out of Vienna, and also they were, they were also cultural and religious factors. All Freud's closest colleagues were Jewish, so he was very pleased that a Christian was interested in it. He didn't want it to become just a Jewish science. So. Um, that was the origin of their working together. But Jung was not just a pupil. You know, Jung wasn't a follower. Jung was a pioneer of his own. He had his own ideas. And Freud tried in, um, very hard to uh, bring Jung into line, that Jung must be his pupil and his great representative in psychiatry. But uh, Jung had his own ideas. Uh, interestingly, along the way, many of Jung's innovations uh, that Freud rejected uh, when, when Jung first postulated these ideas. Like, for example, Jung said that he thought that Freud was uh, placing too much emphasis on sexuality, that there was much more um, that in, in understanding the driving forces of the mind, sexuality played a part, but not as big a part as Freud thought. Actually, in Freud's later work, he came around to that same view. Um, and issues like the, the collective unconscious uh, which initially Freud uh, rejected these ideas. He thought they were too, um, well, actually mystical. Um, 
likewise, as, as he developed in his own work, so he became more interested in culture and in society and in religion and so on. And so he came around to ideas very similar to Jung's, not that he would ever admit it. But this is also what I think we have to get away from, this idea you know, of personalities. Science is not about personalities. It's true that our personalities contribute to what we do, but we must evaluate the ideas in their own right. We must separate the ideas from the personalities. Thank you for this nice answer. And now to the last question. What advice would you give to young students that want to go into the field, and maybe combine the uh, scientific method with more open and broad ideas? Uh, my advice would be don't give up on that. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's all too easy to, to follow the well-worn paths. You know, even today, um, it's still the universities are set up to train researchers and the clinics are set up to train clinicians and they don't really have that much to do with each other. Uh, so it's the easiest way to proceed is you just fit in with the established uh, uh, institutional structures. I didn't. Uh, and couldn't because what drove me into the field were personal, you know, I really needed to understand, I wanted to understand these things. Actually, the origin of my own interest was because my own brother had suffered a brain injury and I saw that he was changed as a person. He was not the same personality anymore. So I, it was clear to me that something as, as complex and as intimate as the personality of my brother was bound up with the tissues of his brain. There must be some way of explaining all of this. So that was why I needed to understand these questions. And, and, and for that reason, I, I didn't follow the easy path. And I'm very glad that I didn't follow the easy path because now, decades later, um, it's no longer so difficult now uh, because, I've, because I've stuck with those big questions, I've been able to find some big answers. And so eventually you make progress anywhere. So my advice to young people coming into the field is don't, don't take the easy path. Don't lose sight of the big questions that got you interested in this field in the first place. This field, there's no field more interesting than the science of the mind. And don't allow yourself to forget uh, that that's what it's really about. Thank you. Thank you. Very inspiring. I'm looking forward for the talk. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you.